Hey guys, so I'm just doing a video on my solar system that I built. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, so I guess the first thing is the batteries. Um, these are eight batteries in a bank of 12 volt batteries in a bank of 24 volts. So I've run them series and parallel to make a 24 volt system. Um, and I've used double O gauge wire to connect them all together, um, which I learned off just in case. He's got a lot of great videos to watch, so look him up on YouTube. Um, so you use nice thick gauge wire to connect all the batteries up um, so that you're getting a nice charge across all of the batteries and you connect your um, inverter or your um, charge controllers from one end from the positive and then from the other end on the negative side so that it all um, charges and discharges nice and evenly. Um, I've used um, heat shrink to like I've used just black cable all over everything um, and for the positive side I've used um, red heat shrink and black sh heat shrink just to cover the terminals on the negative sides so heat shrinks really cheap on eBay it's only it's only about a um, dollar a meter so I've just got heaps of different color oh, well the red and black and lots of different sizes because you'll need it um, and yeah only do a dollar a meter then from the batteries I'll do the charge controllers first. Um, so I've got these two charge controllers that I purchased off Alibaba or Alibaba. Um, they were about five hundred dollars for the two delivered, so they're pretty dear. But um, yeah, they're really they're great. Um, I've got nothing to compare them to, but they they run very well. They never. They never overheat, they never, the fans never even turn on. Nice and cool. Um, it's got a nice big display, it shows everything. It shows 31 volts coming in from the PV array, the solar panels. 28.8 um, volts on my batteries, so they're fully charged. 7.6 amps coming in from the solar panels, which is 220 watts. Um, this is a uh, a uh, temperature gauge for the batteries but I haven't got that hooked up um, and then I've got a total um, total amp hours that I've charged the batteries um, which I can reset that anytime um, so it'll show you how much you've um, how many amp hours you've got for the day and then you know all different menus just to change settings etc but yeah everything's on the one display which I really like. You can get cheaper MPPT controllers off eBay for, I think they're around about 180 bucks at the moment. Um, but I thought, well, I did a lot of research and these had everything that I wanted, so I bought these ones instead. It's only, it was about $70 extra than the cheaper versions to get these ones. Um, so I got two of them, they're 30 amp hours, uh, sorry 30 amps each so that's a total of 60 amps max um, so I've, I've got 1500 watts of solar panels coming in from the roof um, which is around about 60 amps so I had to use two and then um, so the solar panels come in and then they go to this DC uh, uh, PV array DC isolator so I can turn their solar panels off which go into the charge controllers and then they come out and go into the into the batteries on the positive and the negative to terminals um, I've put everything on these boards because one thing I noticed from watching a lot of YouTube videos is that most people have about a thousand wires coming out and going in all different directions and and I sort of wanted to make mine a little prettier a little neater because I don't know, I just like coming in here and looking at what I've built. So, um, 
So that's them. Um, one mistake I did make was using these breakers. These are DC breakers, um, 32 amps, but they resisted the amount of um, power coming from the charge controllers to the battery, so I had to take them out. Um, I mainly wanted these for switches just to turn, to be able to turn the power off from the charge controllers, but I'll, I'll find some other switches to put in. So that was one of the mistakes I made. Um, now this is a crimp, crimper, lug crimper. These are the lugs, these are the um, double O gauge lugs. Um, so yeah, these are really nice and easy hydraulic crimpers. Um, I've seen a lot of people really struggle with those big heavy plier ones that you only crimp once. So I bought these off eBay for $55. They weren't the cheapest ones, so you can get them for around 45 but I think, um, yeah, they just didn't look like very good quality. So, And these ones are excellent. They, they uh, work perfectly and they don't feel, they don't feel cheap. Cheap and nasty, nice heavy steel crimpers. Um, now, um, so going from the batteries then, I've got this double O gauge going to the inverter. Um, and it runs from the positive side into my um, fuse there, the little fuse box. Um, and that's, that's double O gauge going up into this side runs into this um, disconnect so I've got, got a disconnect here so it just turns off so that that, that then runs to double O gauge to my inverter um, this is a pure sine wave inverter two and a half thousand watts continuous five thousand watts peak uh, 240 volts AC um, and then it's got two outlets so it's one up here which I've got running to power power plug that I've installed using um, household gauge wire and then running into a safety switch and then to the outlets so I've got two of these outlets we'll just take that off um, but I haven't I haven't plugged in the other one, the other outlet, yet. Um, so I'm just using this one at the moment. I've got my electric fence, my shed, um, my my pump, water pump, and a light. I can run all of this at the same time. Um, one thing you need to know with um, inverters is that you can't reconnect your, like you can't turn your reconnect your inverter with a load and all of this stuff is the load that all of your um, anything you've got like uh, say my shed which is running a fridge and everything on all my power tools I'd have to turn all of these off before I turn this on so if I were to turn this off yeah I'd just I'd probably use the safety switch and turn it off reconnect the power then reconnect it here otherwise you can blow this up and it won't work anymore um, yeah, it's something you've got to be very careful about. Um, I'm going to put some tags here to uh, remind me because if when you're working on these, you, you're probably turning it on and off a lot. And if you just forget once, it'll just go poof in a cloud of smoke and you've lost all that money. So that's the disconnect. 300 amp disc, disconnect, or about 10 bucks on eBay. Um, I've also got this digital voltmeter and amp meter. Um, now I wouldn't recommend this one, it doesn't have any decimal places so it's either one or zero or you know two, three, four, whatever. Um, I found this one on eBay for twenty dollars. Um, it comes with a shunt. So the shunt is how you, by the way this one has two decimal places so it'll read say uh, 1.40 amps or 
Yeah, so instead of one or two, it's, it's got two decimal places with it. So it comes with a shunt. I've got one of these installed behind this board. So you just um, connect, I think it's the positive, but you'll get your instructions with it anyway. So, so from the positive, um, comes through, it just keeps going to your um, inverter. And these two little connections here go to your amp meter. Um, and that's how you get your amp reading from this shunt. Um, so you need one of these if you're going to put it in a digital shunt, I mean digital amp meter. Um, what else? Um, and also, the way that I... I think that with these cheaper... This one costs about $350 for the 2,500 watts. But I think they overrate their continuous power and peak power to make it sound better. I've, I've um, tested this out and it'll... Anything over 2,200 watts, it will just cut the power. And I've measured it with this amp meter, which also shows volts and kilowatt hours. And you can even type in your cost per kilowatt hour and it'll show you how much dollars per hour or day, like when you leave it on, it'll show you how much um, money it costs to run an outlet. So you just plug this in to an outlet and then plug in your device, whatever you say, your fridge or your TV, and it'll show you how much um, it's costing you to run. So I use this to test this um, at 2200 watts. And I've also tested this with my multimeter to see how accurate it is and it's very accurate so these are very good investment 15 bucks from eBay um, now what else is there highly recommend safety switches so if there's a short anywhere these will turn off just like the ones in your house um, so recommend those um, now I've got these MC4 connectors, these are very cheap off eBay. These are f waterproof connections for your PV array. Very cheap, um, easy to install. Um, so yeah, this is the 8 gauge wire that I'm using for my for my PV array from my solar panels. So coming from the roof, got my solar panels up there and then the what the wires coming down 8 gauge. Whenever you go to Battery World or anywhere like that they'll tell you that 8 gauge is all that you need to um, connect up your batteries but that I don't uh, that, that's not really 8 gauge isn't enough because it'll heat up and it causes resistance when you're charging or discharging your batteries so um, definitely go for a uh, thick gauge wire um, yeah, don't skimp on the wire. Um, what else is there? Uh, yeah, so all, all in all, this system has cost me $3,000. Um, I, I just need to find a way to harness all of the power now. So um, most of the time these batteries are fully charged because I just can't use it quick enough. So I'm going to look into ways of... Um, trying to use up a bit more power, maybe have it diverted to my hot water system or run some connections into the house. Um, so all in all it's cost me about three thousand dollars. That's for all the parts, all of the you know, all the extra bits, all the tools, um, the batteries. The batteries were $160 each for 105 amp hours each. Uh, running into 24 volts equals 420 amp hours um, and they were $1,220 for, for the eight batteries, they're brand new. So that was the biggest cost. And then I've got my, well, $500 for the two of the charge controllers. The, um, this switch and this, um, box here was free with my solar panels then you've got 350 for the inverter and then 20 bucks for the air meter 20 bucks each for the outlets 
thirty dollars each for these two um, safety switches. The wire was for the double O gauge for ten meters. Ten meter roll was two hundred dollars. The wiring. Oh, this is all in Australian dollars too, by the way. Um, uh, the uh, wiring, the eight gauge from my solar panels, was about one hundred and seventy dollars for a thirty meter roll. Um, and my next upgrade will be um, four of these. I bought these second hand, but they were brand new in their boxes for four hundred and forty dollars for four batteries of 120 amp hours so that'll give me an extra 240 amp hours of battery capacity um, but yeah that's pretty much everything so at the moment I've only got the lights that are running behind me my entire shed all my power tools the fridge my electric fence uh, my water pump um, and yeah I just can't keep up with the power so um, but uh, it's a great system, I love it, it's nice and neat and tidy, I really, really like, yeah, just coming here and looking at how much power I'm, I'm getting off, off of my panels, um, yeah, okay, well, if you've got any comments, just leave them in the comments, or if you know of any, any, uh, anything I can do to, to change or make better, um, just let me know. Uh, I'm not an electrician or a solar expert, so it took me about three months of researching on YouTube and Google to figure out all this stuff, um, and probably about a month to hook it all up, as well as the panels um, in between work. So, um, yeah, I guess if if anyone's into sort of DIY stuff, then you can probably figure all this out. Um, yeah, oh, the, by the way, the solar panels, they were about $400 um, second hand. The guy was had only had his system up for about three months, but he upgraded to a five kilowatt system. So, um, yeah, I got 1,500 watts of solar panels for $400, quite cheap. All right, thanks, guys.